Hey YouTube, this is Praxis Prepper. Um, uh, today's video is about a uh, request for an experiment that I was sent by someone. Uh, and these are sort of the results. Um, there's a lot of uh, substitutions happening here, so we'll take it for what it's worth. Um, I've got this large solar cooker that I've uh, that I had on my show in the past. Really great for boiling water, nothing else in my experience. Just way too hot for, for anything other than just boiling water, but awesome at boiling water. Uh, the uh, question that I was given is, uh, it, can you uh, do pressure canning or run a pressure cooker off this? This is my pressure cooker. Um, for my experiment, I did not actually put the pressure cooker up on the solar cooker, uh, and that was for two reasons. One was because it's got all these plastic knobs and everything on the side, and uh, the way the, uh, the solar cooker works, it's got this laser beam. It's not, it's not technically a laser beam at all, but... Uh, this laser beam of light that shoots off it very intense and scans across the bottom of your, your pot. If you don't rotate the pot enough, it, the, uh, the, the focal point will move on to other parts of your pot. And I didn't want to risk uh, having that focal point hit one of the, the uh, plastic little knobs and destroy the pressure cooker or melt pieces off of it. So I'm, I'm using this large pot instead. The other thing I was able to do with this pot is I painted it all this matte black with a high, uh, high temperature uh, black paint that's used for grills and applications like that. Uh, it specifically said it shouldn't be for food use. I'll just mention that, but this is going to be uh, for canning, and I guess it wouldn't be touching your food, and I only painted the outside of it anyway, so I think it's probably not kind of a non-issue. Now, this has been out here for two hours. Uh, after an hour, the, te the water that I put in there, which is about four gallons of water, uh, went from room temperature, which today is about uh, 70 degrees, 60, 70 degrees or so. It went up to... Um, uh, a little over 100 degrees. That's in the first hour of intense, intense sunlight, no clouds in the sky, very clear day. Wow, we have black flies here in New Hampshire. Can you see them? I, I bet if I... Bet, I'm a cinematographer, so I know how to... Have you seen them there? I'm trying to backlight them. There's a lot of black flies here. Anyway, um, went up to about 110 degrees in the first hour. Uh, after that, I uh, uh, sat there for another hour and went up to about 130 degrees. Nowhere near 212. Uh, the reasons that I'm not getting this pot to boil, I think, are because of the size. There's a lot more surface area for it to lose um, light, and you know, there's just less, um, proportionately, there's less uh, sun uh, being uh, collected for, uh, for it. So 130 degrees uh, over about two hours is what I got that up to. Um, and uh, for my purposes, I use this for bath water. Uh, it's rainwater that I collect in my cistern and I put it in here. 130 degrees is totally fine. In fact, it has to cool down way, way down from that to, to be used as bath water. So this is a pretty good application for me. This is the first time that I've done it with the black paint. Uh, I found that helped a lot, sped things up a lot. Uh, but uh, I don't think you could boil this this much water in there. Uh, again, like I said, it's four gallons and this is a pretty large size parabolic dish. Um, so I, I don't think that that would work. Work too. Oh my God. Ah. Why do we live here? Anyway, yeah, I don't think it would work very well. Um, now, certainly there are things that I could do that could improve the setup that I have here. For one, there's a reasonably large uh, seam around the top of the, of the pot. The, the lid doesn't fit onto it very well. So there's, there's steam and there's heat going out uh, through that crack. And on that topic, the entire pot itself is radiating heat in every direction. Um, so if I were to be able to insulate the pot in some way, uh, and I, I'd want to be careful not to use something that was going to burn, you wouldn't wrap it in cloth because it would, if the focal point hit the cloth, it would very easily burst into flames. But uh, if there was some sort of a flame, uh, a non-flammable uh, uh, insulator or something like that. Uh, I, I, I know uh, vermiculite is something that people sometimes will use for applications like this. I think you'd want something that would really wrap around it, uh, but it, that would be something that you could look into, is some way of insulating the pot. And you might be able to get it up to the temperatures that uh, you would need for, for boiling uh, in, in, that, uh, in that case. But as it is, uh, four gallons of water on your average uh, parabolic solar cooker uh, seems a little bit much. And the temperature outside today is, you know, it's probably about 80 out here. So uh, it's not like it's losing a, you know, extraordinary amount or extraordinarily unusual amount to the outside because it's, it's a summer day, so it's warm out. If you have any thoughts, if you have any experience with trying to do pressure canning uh, or, or pressure cooking uh, uh, in a solar application, something like that, and you've had more success than I have, I'd love to hear your thoughts. But for me, uh, it seems like... Uh, uh, boiling about a gallon of water is about as much as I can get off of the uh, 
uh, the solar cooker over there. Uh, but it does that. It does that super well. There's dinner cooking, just doing its thing. I don't have to interfere with it at all. Solar cooking's great. Totally awesome. But apparently, you can't do five gallons of water on my particular solar cooker parabolic dish. Thanks for watching.